Virtually every command that manipulates objects starts with a Select Objects prompt. For example, click the Move tool on the Modify panel. The command line says Select Objects. Click Copy. It says the same thing. Click Stretch, Rotate, Mirror. You get the picture. They all have a Select Objects prompt at the beginning. There are many ways to select objects, and all of the methods I'm going to show you in this lesson can be used in any Select Objects prompt. Open the Selection project file. It has a density of objects that will give us some selection challenges. First of all, the most obvious way to select something is by picking it directly. Click the Erase tool, and then pick a number of objects at random to select them. The advantage of this method is that it is so direct. You just click what you're interested in selecting. The disadvantage is it's very slow. It would take me a long time to pick all of these objects. Press Enter to complete the command. Zoom in a little bit more to the core by rotating the mouse wheel. This time, let's select things more efficiently by using a window. Click Erase, and then click a point up here above the core, but not on an existing object. I'll click right here and move the mouse down and to the right. What I get is an encompassing window shown in blue with a solid border. This selects only the objects that are completely inside the window. So if I click down here, it appears that the circles and some of the lines in the core will be selected. Press Enter, and they're deleted. Let's undo, and this time let's select with a different kind of window. Click Erase, and then click a point down here below the core and to the right of it. If I move the mouse down and to the right, you see that I have an encompassing window. But if I move it up and to the left, it changes into a crossing window. The crossing window selects anything that the window crosses, regardless of whether those objects are completely encompassed with the window or not. If I click up here, it appears that I select everything. I'll press Enter, and indeed everything is erased. Undo. Another way to select objects that don't conform to a rectangular area is with the fence. The fence is a series of connected line segments that selects whatever it crosses. Click Erase, and then type F for Fence, and press Enter. Click an arbitrary point someplace, and then move the mouse. You'll see that you're drawing a dashed line from the first point that you picked. This selects everything that it crosses. Click a point, and move the mouse to a new location. In this way, I can select all the lines that are around the circle. I'll press Enter to exit the fence, and then Enter again to complete the Erase command. Again, Undo. You can select everything like this. Click Erase, and then type All at the Select Objects prompt. Sure enough, everything is selected. Now let's say I don't want to actually get everything, but I want to reserve a few objects. I'll type R for Remove Objects and press Enter. Notice how the prompt on the command line changed. It says Remove Objects now instead of Select Objects. So it works in reverse. Anything that I select now is subtracted from the selection set. I can use any of the methods, including picking, using a crossing window, using an encompassing window, or even using a fence. And these will all be removed from the selection set. I'll press Enter to exit the fence, and Enter again to exit from the Erase command. There are two selection methods that work when you're creating and manipulating objects. They're called Last and Previous. Let's draw a new object. 
How about a circle? I'll click a center point and a radius. I'll press enter to repeat the command and draw another circle adjacent. Now let's say I want to copy one of the circles. I'll click copy. And instead of picking it, I'll type L for last. Last refers to the last object that you created. So I'll press enter to select it and then enter again to exit the select objects prompt, moving on to the next part of the copy command. I need to specify a base point, so I'll click some arbitrary point, and then move the cursor to a new location and click to specify the second point. I'll click once again to create a second copy, and then I'll press enter to end the command. Now let's say I want to move one of those circles. I'll click Move, and instead of picking something, I'll type P for Previous, and press Enter. Notice which circle it selected. It was the first circle that I copied. That's the previous selection. So then I'll press Enter to move on in the Move command, and then click a base point and a second point. The previous selection set can contain more than one item. So if I wanted to move two circles, say, I might select these two, press Enter, and then move them from point to point. If I then wanted to copy the previous selection set, I can. I'll click Copy, type P for Previous, and it selects both of those circles. I'll move on in the Copy command by pressing Enter, and then I'll click two points to make the copy. Press Enter to end the command. Now let's explore a way to select similar objects. Go ahead and select one of the layered objects that has a color. In this case, I'll select this green line. Right-click and choose Select Similar. What happens is all of the lines which are on the same layer are selected. I'll press Escape. Both their object type and their layer must match to be selected with this method. Let's turn on Selection Cycling by clicking this icon in the status bar. Then move the mouse up here somewhere until you see this blue icon appear. When you do, it means that your mouse is over a couple of different objects that are very close together. This allows you to click and then choose which object you want to select from a menu. I can either select the yellow line or the white circle. Let's try that again. I'll go over here in this dense area where there are a lot of objects, and I'll click. And then I have a choice to select the object that I'm interested in. And they highlight on screen, and this gives you a visual indication also of which object you can select. The last selection method I'll leave you with works without issuing a command, so you don't even need to be at a select objects prompt for this method to work. Select a couple of objects, and this turns on their grips. Hold down the shift key and move the mouse over one of the grips and click. The grip turns red. Go over to another grip with the shift key still held down and click it to select. Now both of these grips are selected. Click one of the grips without the shift key held and then you can manipulate the objects. The same spatial relationship is maintained because I selected them with the grip method. I'll click over here to complete this grip edit and press Escape twice to deselect. So in summary, you have learned a plethora of selection techniques, including picking objects individually, creating encompassing and crossing windows, using a fence to select, selecting all, adding and removing from a selection set, using last and previous, selecting similar objects, using selection cycling for overlapping objects, and finally using the shift key to select multiple grips.